Good morning, students. Today, the guidance staff will review with you the process for completing your 2016-17 programming sheet. We want to make sure that you follow the steps that you need to take in order to complete your sheet correctly. Listen up and be prepared to get some beneficial information that will show you what it is that you need to do. Now we're going to introduce ourselves. My name is Claudette Reed and I have the privilege of serving students with the last names A through B, students who are a part of our UTA program, and I serve as the guidance department chair. Hello students, my name is Patricia Martinez. I serve students C through H and all students in the Abbott program. Hey there, I'm Ms. Magaña. I work with students with last names I through P and I also work with English language learners. I'm Stacy Bishop. I work with students Q through Z in the Maritime program. Hi, I'm Shereen Scriven. I'm the College and Career Counselor, and I work with all students. How you doing? I'm Coach Thomas. I'm the success coach here at Blake High School. I service all students, including my 100 wonderful students that I work with. Hi, my name is Ms. Jones. I'm the school social worker, and I service all students as well. Hi, everyone. I'm Lucy Bash, your testing assistant. I service all students as well. All right, students. Let's come inside the guidance office and get started. Hi again, this is Ms. Magaña. Um, uh, what I will be reviewing is graduation requirements. So at this time, you want to look through your packet. Make sure you pull out this booklet. It's a Florida Guide to Public High School Graduation. Basically, it's a fancy name for a graduation guide. You want to make sure you open that. When you open that to page two, you will notice that there is a few tables with graduation requirements. Each table is for students depending on the year that they began ninth grade. So you want to think about your first year here at Blake or just in ninth grade in general and you want to reference that year. For example, students that entered ninth grade in 2012-2013, that is the first graduation requirements table that you see there on your left. Um, so what I will do is I will review the uh, first four core subjects, that's English, Mathematics, Science, and Social Studies. An easy way to remember that is 4433. Three, three. So you got that? 4433. Four, three, three. You need four credits in English, four credits in Math, three credits in Science, and three credits in Social Studies. Um, in English, basically you will be taking a year of English every year you are here. That's English 1, English 2, English 3, and English 4. That'll be your four English credits to graduate. As far as math goes, you will take Algebra. Everybody takes Algebra and uh, Geometry and Algebra 2. Uh, note that for Algebra 1, you must take and pass the FSA. For Geometry and Algebra 2, you must take the exam um, also. Again, that's uh, the end of course exam. In science, you require three credits. Uh, you will take biology. Uh, typically, students will take that in ninth grade. Then you will take either physical science or chemistry. And your third year would be um, an elective science course that you will pick. In social studies, again, you also need three credits. As a 10th grader, you take world history. In 11th grade, you take U.S. history, and as a 12th grader, you take one semester of U.S. government and one semester of economics. So again, that was a review of the four core uh, requirements for graduation. Remember, four, four, three, three. Four of English, four of math, three of science, and three of social studies. It's very easy. You can't forget that. Hello again. This is Ms. Bishop. We're going to pick off where Ms. Magana left off, so if you guys can keep looking at your curriculum guide, we're going to pick up where it says Fine Arts. You will need one credit of Fine Arts to graduate. These are your TV production courses, your upper level culinary, barbering, um, grooming and salon, art, I think that's about it. If you guys have any questions with that, you'll need to see your counselor. Um, we have one credit of Hope required, which is your PE class. Most of you have probably already taken that but just in case you'll have to get that in either online or in school before you graduate. World languages are not required for graduation but you have to have at least two credits in the same language if you're going to go to a university. Um, you'll have to take one credit of an online class and but what I mean by one credit is if it's a whole year course you have to take the entire year not just one semester 
If it's a semester course, you just have to take the semester course. Uh, you'll have to have 24 credits for graduation and a 2.0 GPA. And as Ms. Magana stated, you have to pass the Algebra 1 EOC and the FSA reading. If you guys do not pass that, you'll be placed in intensified classes in your schedule, which will take room away from your electives or other classes that you might want to take. So take those tests seriously. Now you guys will hear from Ms. Scriven about your post-high school options. Hi, I'm Mrs. Scriven, the College and Career Counselor, and today I want to talk to you a little about exploring post-secondary options after high school, uh, talk a little about the college admissions requirements, as well as scholarships and some useful resources. The high school years are such critical years for students. This is the time for exploring self as well as personal growth. So let's take a look at, at some of the options after high school. You have your four-year university or college track where you're receiving your bachelor's degree. You also have your two plus two option where students will go to school uh, at a community college for the first two years, then transfer to the university of their choice afterwards to also receive a bachelor's degree. Uh, some students may be looking at just receiving their associate's degree and just simply going to a two-year community college and finishing there. Uh, we also have the option of your technical and vocational colleges where these are more short-term programs and students become licensed or certified within those specific program areas. Also, we have the military as well as going straight into the workforce. Whatever your option is, the goal is for all of our students to begin developing a plan at this point and getting themselves prepared for reaching those goals. Now, let's take a look a little at the college admissions process. What does it take in order to get into the actual college of your choice? As you can see, it basically aligns with your regular graduation requirements. Students are required to have four credits of English, your four credits of math, that's going to include that Algebra 1 and above, so Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, and anything more rigorous. Uh, you have to have your three credits of Science as well as your three credits of Social Studies, two levels of your foreign language, and it has to be the same language, as well as any academic electives that you may uh, decide to take. In terms of GPA, uh, the minimum GPA would range anywhere from a 2.5 to a 2.9, but keep in mind, students, that this is minimum requirements. Our state universities are certainly more competitive, so you, you certainly want to look at anywhere from a 3.0 and above uh, to be competitive with our state universities. And you'll notice that SAT and ACT scores are also required. Uh, and you'll notice the specific, the specific scores listed here for you. So the key students is definitely making certain that during this programming time that you're taking advantage of all the rigor that Blake has to offer. Focus on uh, taking those honors courses, your AP courses, your dual enrollment courses to make yourself as competitive as you can to be admitted into the college of your choice. Now, definitely making certain that all of these things are met, you also need to keep in mind that you have the opportunity to apply for scholarships, specifically the Bright Futures Scholarship Program. Now, what that entails are three specific scholarship types. You have the Florida Academic Scholarship, the Florida Medallion Scholarship, as well as the Florida Gold Seal Scholarship. The Florida Academic Scholarship requires students to have a 3.5 GPA, 100 hours of community service, as well as take the SAT or the ACT. The Medallion Scholarship requires a 3.0 GPA, 75 hours of community service, and the SAT or the ACT. Uh, the Florida Gold Seal, that particular scholarship uh, is more of our vocational scholarship program. Uh, you have to be a vocational completer. You have to have a 3.5 GPA within that particular vocational program, as well as an overall 3.0 GPA. You also have to have 30 hours of community service, as well as have taken the SAT, ACT, or the PERT uh, test. 
So definitely you want to make sure that you're working towards meeting these specific requirements starting today so that you, by the end of your senior year, you're meeting what it is that it takes so that you can be eligible for one of these particular scholarship programs. Now, Bright Future Scholarship is not the only scholarship out there. We also have tons of other scholarship programs out there. Uh, what I would certainly suggest is that you come by the guidance office and pick up our Yellow Jacket Scholarship Bulletin that we post uh, update pretty much on a monthly basis. Um, you know, it covers uh, ninth grade through 12th grade. Uh, list the specific scholarships that are available. So definitely come by your guidance office and pick up uh, your Yellow Jacket Scholarship Bulletin. Keep in mind that the community service for Bright Futures, it has to be approved. Um, it does require that you complete a proposal in advance before you begin your hours. Those forms are located in our guidance office. Uh, you complete the form, you submit it to myself, and once I receive it, once I approve it, you simply come back to the guidance office to pick up your approved form and then you're able to begin your hours. So please do not forget that very important step. Now, because this is such a crucial time for you all, uh, I definitely want to provide you with some essential uh, tools to help with your college and career planning. First off, we have the Big Future website, which is a part of College Board. And this is such a wonderful website uh, for you all. It helps uh, with searching for colleges, uh, exploring specific careers. Also, it goes into how to pay for college. So looking at financial aid opportunities as well as other scholarship opportunities. Next, we have uh, the Florida Shines website, and this is a new website uh, to Florida. Um, this is basically their academic uh, website for Florida students and parents, and pretty similar to Big Futures website. It uh, offers a feature where you can research colleges, um, you can create a college list, uh, you can look at the different admissions requirements for various colleges as well. Um, research majors and it also includes a very important piece it has an interest inventory uh, assessment where students can begin that exploring piece finding out who they are what you would like to do after you graduate from high school and you can begin specifically researching those careers that are fit for you so definitely check this out um, some other neat features include uh, you're able to pull up your unofficial transcript as well as your bright futures evaluation some very important pieces that you'll need as you're preparing throughout high school so definitely visit www.floridashines.org uh, at your leisure and just explore what it has to offer. So you have the tools that are needed to get you ready and started to begin that planning for post high school. So definitely come to the guidance office, see me during your lunch periods uh, to further discuss what your plans are. All right, students, we want to share some information regarding resources that you can use in order to assist you in completing your programming sheet. The first thing we want to do is to make sure that you're aware that we have our course curriculum guide online. Please write this website down and use it to help you better understand the elective option requirements and your academic core courses uh, requirements. Students, please make sure that you meet with um, your teachers for all academic course level approvals. Magnet students, please make sure that you meet with your core magnet teachers for approval. Initials are required for all course assignments. Students, you had the opportunity to attend an elective fair this week and you are able to observe some things that will help you to determine whether there's a particular elective that you would like to take for next year. Please use that information as you make your selections for the 2016-17 uh, school year. Hello Good. students, again this is Ms. Martinez, so right now I'm going to go through the programming sheets for the magnet students and also for liberal arts. Alright students, 
um, I'll be going through the liberal arts and the magnet. So the first one I'll do with magnet students. So the first step for magnet is you're going to be putting down your magnet program on the very top along with your student name and ID. And also you're going to be putting the grade level you're going to be in for next year for 2016 and 17. Again, the grade level for next year, not current year. All right, students, so on step two, um, now you're going to be um, selecting your academic courses for next year, English, Math, Science, and Social Studies. So you're going to be placing an X in the appropriate subject area per grade level. Now, if you're thinking about going honors level, dual enrollment, or AP, you're going to be needing a teacher recommendation. So that would mean you need to get either their signature or their initials of your current teacher. So let's say if you're in English 1 honors and you want to go to English 2 honors to come next year, you're going to be selecting English 2, putting an X next to the box, but also getting your, your current Eng English teacher's signature. And it's going to be the same thing for the other subjects, math, science, and social studies. So again, now go to the liberal arts section. Um, same thing as a magnet, except you're not going to put in a magnet um, program. So again, just put your name at the top, your ID, your grade level for next year, filling out step one, which includes your telephone number, parent's name, telephone number, and email address. And also, same thing as I referred to the magnet side, uh, step two, selecting your subject area, um, pre appropriate grade level for uh, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade for English, Math, Science, and Social Studies, and making sure that you obtain your teacher's recommendation slash signature um, if you're planning to go into uh, rigorous honors, AP, or dual enrollment for those subjects. All right, students, we're now ready to review Step 3. Step 3 of your programming sheet reviews electives. Students, please look carefully at the elective options that are indicated on your sheet. Make sure that you're, you've completed the required electives, such as PE, which is HOPE, or if you've opt to do ROTC, that you've completed two courses under ROTC. If you're planning on attending a state school, you would need to complete two units of world language. We need students to look at identifying 10 options for electives. Please rank them in the order, one being the one that you want the most, 10 if you receive that course you would be fine, but it's not your top priority. So again students, please rank your elective options 1 through 10. 1, the one you want the most, 10, the one if you receive it it's fine, but it's not something that you really want. Now we're going to move to step 4. In step four, we're going to require you to provide us with some signatures. Students, please sign and date this form. Take this form home to your parents and review it with your parents, and then have them to sign it and date it. It's important that you have signatures from your parents as well as from you. The programming sheet needs to be turned in on Tuesday, December 15th, to your homeroom teacher. Friendly reminder, please make sure that you make contact with all of your academic core teachers for them to sign off for the level in which you will be taking your courses next year. All right, students, in closing, you've received a wealth of information today that will assist you in completing your programming worksheet. If you have any questions regarding any aspect of this process, please don't hesitate to contact any of our school counselors, our assistant principals for curriculum, Mr. Basham and Mrs. Thompson. We are all here to help. Thank you for your attention and have a wonderful Yellow Jacket Day.